Now we'll look at another way to represent color values, um, and this is using the hue saturation intensity, or HSI, model. So recall that we had the RGB space, the color cube. What we can do is, um, is basically do a corded transformation to go to HSI. So the intensity is going to be the almost, you can think of it as the magnitude of the vector, the length of the vector to each point. Um, so it is basically, we're going to see, is the distance along the diagonal from black to white. The hue is the angle about that diagonal, and the saturation is the distance from that diagonal. So hue represents the color, the type of color. Saturation is the purity of the color. And then intensity, of course, is intensity. So this is a diagram looking down the axis of the color cube. So this, was the, uh, this point represents the axis from white to black, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. Um, here, this shows a, um, a, a color point, let's say here. The hue is the angle about the axis, like this. And the saturation is this distance from the axis. So the, the values of hue you can see would vary from red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. Um, a saturation of zero would indicate basically you're on the diagonal, so you just have shades of gray from black to white. Um, and this is, again, looking down the diagonal, plotting um, values in a slice of this, um, of this space here. So there are various conventions for transforming from RGB to HSI. Um, this particular one um, uses these equations. So it doesn't quite use the length of the vector, the RGB vector, but simply takes the mean value of RGB and B. Um, Hue looks, this is definitely what we're, what we would expect. It's, a, it's an angle ranging from uh, 0 to 360. And um, this is the saturation, which again is the distance from the um, axis to the point RGB. And this, this image here, this color image, uh, which is an image of the color cube, we have transformed to the components H, S, and I. So the intensity is, as you would expect, looks like a grayscale version of the original image. The saturation, um, again, we, we expect that um, white has zero saturation, so it's completely black or zero here. And as we get further away from the axis, all the way out to the corners, uh, we have the maximum value of the saturation, so it's the purest color. The hue, um, remember we said was the angle about the axis and you can see that it crosses the um, I guess the uh, boundary between 0 and 360 right here so as we rotate about the axis we go from 360 and we wrap back around to 0. Here's an example um, in MATLAB that we're going to use the function RGB to HSV. MATLAB uses uh, hue, saturation, and value instead of hue, saturation, and intensity, but almost the same thing. So we take this color image, this RGB image, and split it out into its bands, uh, hue, saturation, and value. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. Um, in fact, I'm going to start up a program and this is called cup uh, let's see am I in the right no nope. I have to switch over to the directory
Okay, so I'm going to call uh, RGB to HSV on this input image, and I'm going to assign that to a new image called HSV. Then I'm going to go ahead and split out the various um, bands of HSV. So the first band will be the hue. The next will be um, band number two, that's the saturation. And then the third one will be the uh, value. So <clears throat> I'll go ahead and display each of those um, bands. Now I'll, I'll use this command called subplot. This is kind of handy. I'll say that I want a 1 by 3 array of images. <coughs> and the first one I'll show is H. The second one I'll show is uh, S. And the third one I'll show is uh, V. So I'll go ahead and run that. Um, there's the input RGB image, and this is the three uh, components. So what we've got is the hue here. Looks like um, this red color is um, very high value of hue. Then we've got saturation and finally value. Okay. Um, next what we can do with these uh, HSV is to try to do some identification or segmentation of colors in the image. So if we know the particular HSV value we're looking for, generally we're more interested in the hue and the saturation and not so much the intensity because intensity can vary. But um, if, if I wanted to look for, let's say, this blue color here, what I can do is um, threshold or have a mask for each of H, S, and V. So I've, I've looked at the values in the image and I've seen that the hue values for that blue are between 0.4 and 0.6. So if I threshold on 0.4 and end that with an inverted threshold on 0.6, I can get a binary image for H. Uh, similarly, if I um, threshold on 0.5, so I want fairly saturated points, um, I can get a mask for S. And also the V one, I'm just going to threshold on 0.3, so that's a pretty low threshold. So I'll go ahead and display those three masks. I'll and them all together to get a final resulting mask. And then I'll do just a little bit of cleanup. You don't need to do this, but this eliminates small, valid, small tiny regions and merges. Um, it gets rid of holes in larger regions. And finally, I'll draw a boundary with um, this code here, MATLAB called a uh, function called BW boundaries. So you pass in a binary image. It returns the points along the binary, the boundaries of the regions. And then just this simply just plots those points on top of the original image. So I'll go ahead and add this to my program. And uh, run that one. So what you can see here is this is the mask. So I've... Um, Remember, this is the mask on the hue, the mask on the saturation, and the mask on the value. And then this is the resulting mask of anding them all together and then performing those morphological operations on them. And finally, this is the result of doing BW boundary to just draw boundaries um, around those detected regions. <coughs>